Testing, testing. Okay. Uh, basically, I'm going to jump in here, show you something. Uh, I'm past Path Mapper, but I'll probably be utilizing it in all of my scripts, along with a uh, uh, getting into that, but also getting into the split tree. You're going to find I pair those up, and I'll be doing a little bit of scripting with lists uh, in the masks. So you're going to see a lot of Path Mapper, split tree, and masks from now on. Uh, this is a conceptual, computational, architectural rendering of uh, a pretty cool thing, uh, in my opinion. So what I can do is just cancel out for a second and show you that I've, I've baked it in different sections. Uh, you can grab different areas of it rendered, uh, different floor values, these three, and grab these three back here to kind of consider. You could render these in different materials if you wanted. They're really elegant uh, forms on floors of a building. And how did I control the data in this uh, field study to build this architecture, this conceptual computational uh, study? Um, I haven't made it, I haven't thickened it. You know, I haven't made planes. I haven't worried about anything. I just wanted the uh, concept of it and how it would come together. And I'm very excited about it. There's a little tricky areas in here. It's pretty darn intricate if you were to take it into wireframe and realize the complexities of it because it's a field study. But uh, that said, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a model. And let's take a look how it's made. Um, grab off of here, go into standard visibility off, and we'll take this back into, well, we'll leave it in render. Um, uh, probably not great to leave it in render. Let's put it over in shaded. Uh, I've brought in a series. I've merged a lot of different fields. I merged a line charge. I merged a point charge, three point charges, and I merged a... Uh, spin force. I brought those into a field line and generated these curves. And they're fully parametric. I'm not going to change them. Uh, you can put different strengths, uh, steps, accuracy on them, radii, decay, whatever you want. But those curves are generated. Uh, it's data with a path A and B, if you want to call it, with indices or items one on, uh, on each. Uh, of the branches, so that's not too hard a geometry to start with. And yes, you could generate it in many different ways. I think it's cool to bring it out of the um, vector field area. So jump in here and have some fun. Uh, that said, I've lofted it. And in lofting it, I've set it so it can only pick up integer, uh, odd numbers. Uh, when I go to my edit values, it'll only be odd numbers and it'll start at three. So I find that works well with lofting. You don't have to keep that. The domain uh, can go up. You could loft this farther. You could take this up and go into the 20s, which I'm interested to do later. Um, but basically, it's going to just hesitate. It's got to think whenever I change anything. That's why I'm trying not to change anything in it. Uh, it shouldn't slow anything down uh, since I didn't change the number, but it's got to register it. Okay. Um, got those uh, lifted up. And then I'm bringing it as data, three branches, six items each. I brought it in, I've swapped uh, the indices or the item list with the path B, and I've decided to grab all of the, uh, leave the first path A alone and then grab 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 until it's done. And of course, in that being my positive attributes, those lines, then my negative comes out here. You see how they just step up and down? So that pairs lines together. And in doing so, I now can rotate them in a positive and negative direction in a range, and I can control that. I can change it on each one. I can keep the uh, minimum spin or the maximum spin, and I'm going to do a rotate this way with the three lines, and I'm going to rotate this way with the other lines, and that's it. Uh, once that's done, I can clean the tree of any nonsense that's in there. I definitely want to make sure any remove any odd numbers. You're going to find you want to pair up your data, and I ended up doing that, and I think I paired it up to nine items, well, right here, uh, one branch with nine items and one branch with nine items. And then I'm able to very simply grab one and put it into the other system. So there's a loft, a beautiful loft for one floor. What a wonderful pattern. It can be rebuilt, but right now it's a pretty awesome pattern. There's the second loft. There's the third. And there you go. You got all three of them. If you grab down like this, there they are. One, two, three, staggered and gilled and a really nice concept drawing for three different floors. That said, grab the next set, loft it up. You'll notice that it does have a little bit of a 
it's, it's more of a long low building, but I could accentuate this. You have the next floor, and you have the next floor, and you can bring all three of those together. And there they are. And as a rendering, uh, not bad. Uh, you could bake them if you had to, and you'll see the gills kind of comes up through it. There's some interesting uh, rooms and things happening underneath. But this is just a concept computational study. And here's the last set, this long drawn out one, almost like an airport. Uh, next one comes onto it, and the third one comes onto it. You could rebuild these surfaces. But when you're all said and done, you can take them all and unhide what you had. And there you go. You got a pretty cool uh, building, in my opinion. I'm going to take those items again. I'm going to hide them. We're just going to stagger out here a little bit. And I'm going to bring uh, the domain up to, I could take, I could, I could turn the solver off. Or I could just crank this. I'm going to put it up 30. I haven't done this yet. I'm going to let it solve. And it's really going to try and lift three times the height. We're going to get a totally different structure. Not sure how long it'll take to run the script. But like I said, you're going to see me using again and again the path mapper with the shift uh, paths. And then I'll be scripting in a sense of uh, programming in. This, this is the key. This one, this one, and this one. I'm going to be controlling my data a lot better now uh, when I do that. So let's see. Just surprise why. What do I have? I have a pretty nice loft on the first one. Very nice. A beautiful field study curve for architecture. Second one, very high. Third one, outstanding. And now we can grab all of them and see what we got. Let's just take a second to load them, and you see there's really a blast to go to the form. So maybe this is a simple propeller study. Um, I think it's great. I, I, I'm i not focused on architecture in my life. I've still been looking at it forever. The idea of uh, uh, parametricism coming after modernism and postmodernism, which is uh you know for me uh a step in the right direction in the last decade two decades i think it chases back to the history of everything um we could we could take this one to bake um let me see if i uh if i grab those three and click on them i might be able to bake in a group yes i'll bake those three in a group here and then i'll just grab this next set and i'll bake those it should allow me to bake but maybe not because I was outside of the group. Yeah, bake in another group. Just takes a second. Grab this one. And we'll grab the last one. Hopefully I can bake in a group as well. Yep. It's always a little tricky to figure that out. And uh, now that you have that, once that's baked, I can leave this alone. I could do -si do in here. Have a little fun with my studies. I've got them grouped in three. I could have put them on layers, but I didn't. The last one's there. Keep in mind I want to jump off of that. Grasshopper. And here they are, one, two, three studies. Very simple. Uh, it's almost like you only baked one, uh, one, two, three. But that data being spun and manipulated, I just I find it outstanding. I'm very happy with it. Uh, rendered. We can go into materials. We can go into the rendering. We can put on a little bit of a gradient floor. Uh, have some fun with that. Nice yellow or greenish floor, uh, whatever. And then grab your sections and go into your materials. Add whatever you want. If we want to do metal on each one, we could. I don't find metals that exciting on every one, but we'll just grab it. We'll pop in a metal one and leave a white one. And we'll just take that to a sign. There we go. Nice. You know, you can see the folding of the metal. What could happen? What a nice exercise as things kind of plug through one another. I'm kind of rambling because, uh, you know, I, I, I have definitely taken a step back. Learn to control my data more. Uh, I feel much better stepping in and programming and scripting through my path mapper and my shift uh, paths. Um, it's totally manageable. I'll just leave the white here. And, uh, well, maybe I'll put it into black, uh, like a plaster, dark uh, color, whatever. And just pull that in and see how that reflects off of it. There you go. Nice little shape. To think that that's a field study and I actually have control over that, lofting it, moving it, twisting it, torquing it, it may seem simple, but uh, formally I'm, I'm starting to really get into this stuff. Thanks for watching. Ten minutes.